Hey there, Taurus. Welcome to your reading for uh, May 2023. Uh, we're just going to jump right in here, Taurus. In your first uh, row here for your general energies, you have this card that says the past. The past is coming back. Old job or old connection. I look to the past to understand the future, a lesson or an old skill. Uh, again, I think you need to be looking towards the future. I mean, literally the two of swords. She needs to turn around and see this new island that is behind her, as I always say. Yeah, so, I mean, some of you could have a choice here like between, you know, the past and the future. Are you kidding? You have this past life card as well. So I feel like you need to really like kind of make sure that you don't get stuck in the past as far as love is concerned. Uh, but I do feel like this could be also a past connection that's really a past life connection, obviously, that could be coming in for you uh, if you want love in your life in general. Um, so, you know, definitely something I would be paying attention to. Yeah, you have the four wands as well, which could be marriage. Look at this. This is actually pretty good for those of you that want a love connection, Taurus. Um, you know, so I would just say uh, go for it. And I also feel, and are you kidding? I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew that Divine Counterparts was going to come up here. So, you know, to me, it makes perfect sense just based off the astrology that, uh, you in particular could be attracting like a divine counterpart, a divine connection, uh, something like that. Again, I feel like you're going to have to let go of something from the past and it could be a past person. Um, for some of you, I feel like you could be attracting a person who is like letting go of a past, like, you know, karmic or whatever. So, you know, if you want love, definitely looks really good. I do also feel that this reading is talking about taking a risk. You literally end with a take a risk card. For some of you, it could be the risk of shooting your shot with a person or something like that. But I also feel there could be like a business risk that you are taking. You know, you have this vision card that I'll show you in just a minute. But, um, you know, I feel like some of you, it's like, it's almost like you're having visions, but maybe not like visions. It, I feel it's more of a feeling, you know, it's like if you're getting really excited about a new idea, like in work or business or your career, I feel like that excitement is saying, yes, move in this direction, like take the risk. <laughs> so uh, I feel really good about this reading in general, but it looks amazing for love, but also really good for money. Uh, you have the two of pentacles here. Again, I think what you're holding on to, and I'm, I'm not even talking about just love here, I'm talking about everything. You know, it could be some like past failures, some past mistakes. So, you know, even in work and business, you could be like worrying about some, you know, mistakes that you made in the past or some, uh, you know, situations that you ran into or whatever. And I kind of feel like this is saying, you know, it's a different time. You're in a different time. Things are different. You know, you're not the same age anymore. You've learned a lot. And so now clearly it's time for you to take a risk. You uh, you show up in a very strong position here uh, as the King of Pentacles. I love when people show up as themselves because it just puts you in a position of power and strength. It kind of like allows you to get what you want from the reading. So uh, pretty straightforward stuff here, Taurus. But uh, let's clarify this first row. I'm going to use this um, Lenormand to clarify. And with the Two of Swords, you have the star. It makes perfect sense. I mean, you know, with Pluto and Aquarius, literally the star card. And, you know, this card actually represents in the Lenormand, it actually represents Jupiter and Aquarius. But it doesn't matter. Um, you know, still Aquarius energy. And uh, Jupiter's better anyway. So, you know, very expansive. Uh, the star kind of represents something that you aim at, you know, something, you know, obviously it can be a card of fame, recognition, fortunes, you know, good luck, things like that. But, um, you know, to me, it can also be just like the star in the tarot. And it can say that there's something that could, you know, increase your reputation in the world that could give you a reputation as well. It's like if you want to become a leader, you have the emperor here and the empress. It's like, you know, outside of love, you could say that those two energies are just what you're balancing out inside of yourself. You know, you're balancing out those two energies. So you could be like bossing up here, starting a business, you know, anything like that. But it's like there's something that's going to increase your reputation is like what I'm getting. Uh, with the two of pentacles, you have the clouds. I feel like you need to stop hesitating is what I would get here. And, and it doesn't matter like what this is in your life. The clouds can represent confusion, lack of clarity, things like that. But really, I'm just getting hesitation here. It's almost giving me like King of, Pe I mean, uh, Knight of Pentacles vibes, Taurus. So I feel like some of you just need to take that leap of faith, like take some sort of risk. With the King of Pentacles, you have the bouquet. This is like an offer uh, that could be coming in for you. So, you know, if you want love, this could be like a person coming in and making an offer or like offering a gift or... It could also be like the gift of attention as well. So, you know, someone could be wanting to give you attention. You could be wanting to give someone else attention, take it how it resonates. Uh, again, if this is love, then, you know, clearly there's no way around it. There, This is clearly 
a very, very positive love reading if you want love. Um, but as I always say to you, Taurus, there's a major focus on your heart. So, you know, just in the astrology. So if you're doing something like work or business wise that is heart based or even, you know, your health, if you're doing things to improve your health or whatever, then you're then you're going to have a good time <laughs> is what I'm trying to say. So love it. Uh, next, what are we doing here? Uh, we are doing um, what you need to know. Right. Uh, you have this past life card it says past events, people from the past, past life connection, history, memories, families, uh, soulmate. So I feel that there could be someone from the past coming in for you. I kind of feel like this person could be an old soul as well. So, you know, that might be something that stands out to you is that they kind of have like a lot of wisdom. Maybe they give off those old soul type of vibes here, uh, but definitely a past life connection. Uh, so, you know, that's good. Uh, I also feel that this could be you kind of, I kind of feel like you could be fulfilling a vision because again, I'll, I'm going to show you this in a minute, but you have this vision card right here. So it's almost like you could be fulfilling some sort of like, you know, soul mission that is, that is like, I feel like right now it's something that you see as fulfilling. <laughs> so, you know, it could be like a project that you want to work on. It could be like something that you want to present to the world, like a YouTube channel or something like that. It could be anything. And uh, I feel like not only is there a lot of fulfillment in doing this for you, but, you know, I feel like this is like a wish or a dream come true. And I feel like you could be having a lot of, you know, visions, like maybe not literally, but like I said, feelings where you think about starting something and you get excited or, you know, something just feels right to me in this reading here, Taurus. Uh, you, but you have the Queen of Cups here. Um, again, you always get this card. To me, it's just the astrology is really encouraging you in particular, Taurus, to follow your heart. And, you know, I always say that's probably Uranus and Taurus, but Pluto and Aquarius is also very heart-based. So, you know, I feel like there's like a lot of heart-based opportunity for you to kind of like do things or, you know, guide yourself towards things that you, you know, that you feel intuitively guided towards, or I don't know, it's 1010, as I say that. This is the second time that I've seen 1010. Uh, I saw it yesterday as well, which is weird, but you know, I would say follow your heart with this energy. You have the temperance card. It's kind of weird feeling I get here. It's like, I feel like some of you are like hoping that you can change some circumstances or like, I kind of get this feeling. I don't get anything temperance <laughs> other than, you know, the only temperance thing that I get here is like kind of patience, but also like that you might want that you're trying to maybe change a situation around. I feel like this is saying, don't get too far ahead of yourself. Like you could be um, wanting to start a business, but you could be, you know, projecting too much into the future. And you could be saying to yourself like, oh, X, Y, and Z needs to happen for this business to be successful, but it might not be true. Same thing in love as well. It's like some of you, it's like you might be getting into something where maybe it's like long distance or, you know, maybe you're, uh, this person lives a certain way and maybe you feel like, oh, I have to make these changes so that this can be perfect. I feel like this reading is saying, if you're having those thoughts, like too much future projection, too much future thinking, I feel like this is saying like, don't do that because number one, like what you're thinking and what's actually gonna happen, totally different. <laughs> and if you think too much into the future, I feel like you're going to kind of like, create problems that don't need to exist. So I almost feel like this row is encouraging you to stay present in all areas of your life. And, you know, I feel like maybe you're excited and that could be why I'm getting this feeling here, right? Is it, It's really just excitement. I feel like it's great to be excited. It's great to feel, you know, joyful. And clearly there's something really good, 10 of cups, empress, four of wands, you know, coming in for you. But I would just like slow things down. With that nine of cups, you have this bear card. The bear, I actually consider it to be kind of like a good card in the Lenormand. Um, you know, it's kind of like a good bad card. It can represent overbearing energy, it can represent like a bully or someone who's like putting too much pressure on you, but it's also a card of like power and it's a card of education as well. Um, you know, normally there's like a mother bear teaching two little baby bears what to do. And, you know, I feel like you've been learning a lot in just through life. With the Queen of Cups, you have this Bees card. Uh, this is not an actual Lenormand card, it, but there's some extra cards in this deck and it just says sweetness, cooperation, hard work. Again, I feel that there is a lot of cooperation here. Ten of Cups, uh, amazing card of cooperation, not just in love, but you know, pretty much all areas of your life. If you're starting a business and maybe you're working together with people or maybe you're starting a business and uh, you know, kind of uh, starting a community or something, you know, really good card for doing that. It's also a card of education in this deck as well. So, you know, again, I'm 
a big fan of education right now, just mostly because Pluto has left Capricorn. It's going to retrograde back into Capricorn, but that Capricorn energy, um, again, just because a planet leaves doesn't mean that we're done working with the energy. Again, we have to work with Pluto and Aquarius energy. I mean, sorry, Pluto and Capricorn, but also Aquarius uh, for the rest of our lives. Also, we had Saturn in Capricorn. Saturn's going to come back around in like 26 years or something like that, right? It's going to come back to Capricorn. And, um, when it comes back, even if you're 60 years old, <laughs> when that happens or older, it doesn't matter. Cap Saturn and Capricorn is going to say, did you learn? Did you learn what I taught you when like 30 years ago when uh, I, I was there the first time? So again, I keep encouraging people that self-education is how you can win right now. With the temperance card, you have this mountain card. Here you go. You know, this is, uh, this has obstacles, delays, struggles, uh, you know, blockages, things like that. But again, I feel like you are creating these things in your head. So like, don't create problems where there aren't problems. I was really getting that feeling on the, you know, on that temperance card. It's almost like too much future thinking, too much future projection. It's like a really good reading. But sometimes I think when things start really going well, we start like wondering, okay, when's a bad thing going to happen? And I feel like this reading is saying, don't do that. <laughs> like don't create something bad that doesn't need to happen. Uh, next, you have this vision card. This is from the uh, Threads of Fate Empyrean Oracle. Really awesome. These are like holographic. Uh, full disclosure, I have a business relationship with Threads of Fate and they are launching three new decks that you can find more about down below at the uh, link in the comments. And uh, they're launching three awesome new decks that are also like animated. I'm actually gonna be showing those off in a couple of days here. But uh, again, full disclosure, I do have a business relationship with them. But as I was saying, I get more of a feeling here. I feel like it's more, it could be visions. You could be having like dreams, daydreams, things like that. But it's like when you have these visions, I think you are getting very excited. And this is showing up in the area of the unexpected. Again, as usual with you, I think I said to you at the beginning of the year that there's nothing unexpected for you. I'm telling you right now <laughs> that I don't think much is going to be unexpected for you, Taurus, like for the rest of this year and maybe even into 2025. There's just like too much obvious energy is what I would call it in your astrology. So, you know, I'm pretty sure I said at the beginning of the reading that, you know, I don't try, I mean, the beginning of the year, I don't try to make these readings fit. If there's nothing unexpected, I'm just going to say it. And again, I don't really, I don't really see anything unexpected here. I do think what could be a little bit unexpected, just a tiny bit is again, if you meet, if you meet a person, you know, it's like, it could literally lead to marriage here. So, you know, that might be unexpected, but overall, um, you know, I feel like you're ready for something. The four wands is marriage. And of course we see great love stuff here. So that's definitely possible. But you know, the four wands is a card of freedom. These people, they've completed part of their journey in there. You know, I always say that I consider the four wands to be a portal card. It's like, you see this portal here in the middle. And once you go through the portal, that's when you are set free. So how do we go through the portal on the four of wands? Well, you could be wrapping something up, like completing a project or, you know, uh, taking your business to the next level. But usually, it, usually we're like completing a stage of something, of life, of business, of health, whatever. So it's like, if you're going to the next stage, then you are working with the four wands energy. And I would say that there's clearly a lot of success on whatever is on the other side of whatever you're completing. You have the 10 of cups here. Again, 10 of cups represents fortune after difficulty. I feel like you're getting to a really good part in your life. It's almost like, you know, this is going to sound weird, but you know, it's almost like maybe you chose, you know, be, before you came to earth, maybe you chose to go through to get all the, you know, all the junk out first. You know, it's like almost like maybe you chose to learn all your lessons in the first part of your life. And I'm not saying the rest of your life is going to be like super easy, but you know, it, it's almost like things are getting easier. Um, and maybe that's what you chose before you came here is to like get all the junk out first. And now you're kind of entering into this like much nicer time. Ten of Cups is about focusing on your happiness. So I feel like you need to do that. But again, if you're attracting love, I feel like you could be attracting like a person you have a family with. Now you have the High Priestess here. I think that we're in a very intuitive time, of course. We have Neptune and Pisces. So this is Pisces. I feel like you need to trust your intuition. You also have the moon here as well. And you know, pretty much everyone gets the high priestess and the moon. I'm, I always make the joke that Pisces is all up in everybody's business, but really, I just think that we're in a time where we could be getting intuitive messages. Also, the other thing I would say is that she has these three stages to the moon on her crown here. And those three stages represent the fact that she sees the beginning, middle, and end of every situation before she enters into it. So she like, 
you know, she uses her powers of visualization, you have that vision card, to imagine a life she wants before she gets it. So, you know, I feel for a lot of you, like visualization could be very powerful. It could help you, you know, improve your life or whatever. Uh, with the four wands, you have the coffin card. The coffin represents entering into a new life. <laughs> you know, that four wands, completing something, the coffin literally, you know, I always say that in traditional Lenormand, the coffin door is closed and it says that, you know, that you're inside the coffin. You need to leave the coffin to experience your new life. Basically, you have to step into something new uh, and, you know, inside the coffin is your old life. So a lot of you are going, stepping into this new life. Uh, with the ten of, wand, ten of Cups, sorry, you have the Snowflake card. Again, not a Lenormand card, just one of the Oracle cards. It says different, unique, fragile, clarity, impermanence, uh, individuality, complexion, or complexity, I think is what it says. Um, so again, I feel like you could be attracting someone who is like a special snowflake, right? <laughs> but I mean that in a good way, like not a bad snowflake, like a good snowflake, like someone very unique, very different. We kind of talked about that. I also feel like you could be, I feel like you need to see this inside yourself, like how... You know, like the way that you put something isn't ha how someone else is going to see it. Again, I always like say to people, it's like there are no original ideas anymore. It's like for, for the most part, it's like nothing is really original, right? Um, but it's like maybe how you see something is original. Maybe your own personal experience with something is what is original, right? And so I always tell people like don't discount your information. Maybe you want to write a book. Maybe it's ab about something that already exists, but it's like the way that you see it, your experience with it is what makes it unique. So, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, put your information out there. With the high priestess, you have the fox. I would definitely be careful of sneaky people. You know, again, the Mercury retrograde, we could have people trying to come back from the past and everything. I would be careful of that. But um, overall, the fox can represent blending in with an energy, like matching the energy of the things that you want in life. So again, I would definitely do that here. Uh, at the end, for messages from your future self, you have this take a risk card or take risks card. So I would definitely take a risk, especially if you have your like eye on a person. Maybe you need to flirt more with this person or I don't know. I feel like something needs to be brought to light. You have the moon in this row and the moon kind of represents something needing to be exposed. So, you know, for some of you, uh, I would definitely do that. For others, this could be about bossing up, right? Because you have the emperor, the moon and the empress. The moon, you can see here that there's a path straight down the middle and it ends in some mountains. The mountains represent achievements in the tarot. And I kind of feel like this is saying you might not know exactly how to do what you want to do. I feel like I always say this to you, Taurus, but <laughs> you know, I always get this message that you might not know all the details. You might not know like every little step that you need to take to be successful, but I feel like you just need to take the steps to be successful at whatever it is that you're doing because you will be successful. Uh, you have the emperor here. So again, I kind of get this feeling that you are bossing up here big time. I feel like you're getting a lot of attention. Some of you literally could be like starting businesses or, uh, you know, starting something new in your life. And I see a lot of success there. You also have the Empress. So divine counterparts, of course. Uh, also your energy, Taurus. So you're showing up in a very strong position here. But I kind of feel, number one, divine counterparts. You could be meeting a divine counterpart. Uh, number two, I feel like you could be balancing these energies out inside of yourself and kind of getting a lot of attention like in work or business or, you know, whatever it is that you do. With the uh, emperor, you have the whip. The whip is about beating yourself up. It's, uh, you know, it's like whipping yourself in the back. Traditionally, that's what this card represented. It kind of represented uh, repeating a mistake like over and over and over again. I kind of feel like some of you could be afraid to repeat a mistake or if, uh, you know, I do get this feeling here that if you're meeting a person that again, I would not like project too much into the future with this person. Clearly it's like a divine counterpart, but I'm wondering if it's this person that is fearing repeating a mistake. I I'm not saying it is gonna be a mistake, but they might be a little bit reserved or they might hold back a little bit. And I feel like if you give it time, they will open up. Uh, with the moon, you have the tree. The tree, everyone's had the tree. Again, I always, I kind of look at this as Uranus and Taurus energy. That's not what it represents. It actually represents Virgo, but this card. But, you know, I kind of look at this as Uranus and Taurus energy because Uranus and Taurus is all about like longevity, vitality. Um, you know, it's all about uh, building something of that uh, matches up with your values as well. And so we typically want to build things that are more longer term under Uranus and Taurus. I talk about this to you all the time. So it's like anything that you're building, business, work, health, love, whatever, uh, there's gonna be a long-term focus. 
And with the Empress, you have the fish. This represents a soulmate, by the way, the fish card. It does represent like material success, wealth, um, you know, improving your finances, things like that. But um, uh, traditionally, it was a card of a soulmate. So you could have a soulmate coming in or again, and I should say, because I feel like both for some of you, uh, you are increasing your finances through kind of like taking a risk. You could be building a community, um, putting yourself out there in business, you know, something along those lines. Um, uh, so really good reading. Uh, I would just use your, um, you know, I really, literally, I would use your imagination to kind of like create what you want this month. You know, use your, use your visualization skills. Uh, we're gonna pull five main themes now. Uh, you have this lover card. So clearly, <laughs> the whole entire reading was basically about love. There clearly could be love coming in for you. Uh, you have this haughtiness card. Yeah, I, I would be careful of showing off um, just in general. Um, you know, because just, I don't know, you know, I, I think that we need to make sure that we get positive attention at this time, not attention for showing off. That doesn't mean that you can't show off, but it's even like, even me, I posted that picture of me holding fake money. I And I said in the comments and I said in the post itself that it was fake money, right? And a bunch of people like went off on me about that. Not that I care, um, you know, obviously, because I don't care. But, you know, the thing is, it's funny that even me posting fake money, people still got all upset about it. So, you know, again, I would be careful of like showing going off and you know things like that as well with the haughtiness card and I'm not I'm not saying you are showing off um, I think it's better to inspire people at this time again uh, there's a quote by the ultimate warrior who was an old wrestler and he says you know uh, don't instruct people inspire people or I think he said inspire people actually don't instruct people and uh, I think it's an amazing time to inspire people just by you know being a living example uh, next, you have this uh, faithfulness card. If you're attracting love, I definitely feel you're attracting someone who's um, very faithful. I feel like I've said this to you before. You know, it could be a Scorpio that you're attracting. It's like Virgo always gets Scorpio, but I, I feel like I just said this to Scorpio. I could be wrong, but it could be a Scorpio that's coming in for you. Take it how it resonates. Uh, it could be any sign, it, but it's like I get this feeling that it's like what happens to this person is like, I feel like everyone, you, you might be wondering, like you, I kind of get this feeling, let me just say this, <laughs> that you might meet a person and you might wonder like, how is this person single? Like it might, you might think like this person's too good to be true. Or maybe the, fa the fact that they are single, it's like you're taking it as a warning sign because it's like, maybe they're so awesome or something, but then you're like, wait a minute, no, no, maybe they're not really this awesome. Maybe it's fake, you know? But I think everyone thinks that about this person. Everyone makes that mistake. So again, you could be meeting a person Person like that, where it's like everyone thinks there's no way this per this person's too good to be true, but they're not. Again, I would I think that we are in a time. I say it to every single sign that we need to trust actions, um, not words from people. Although we should listen to their words. If they tell us things, then we should listen to those words, <laughs> right? Um, like if they say, "Oh, I've cheated on my all my exes," they're probably going to cheat on you. So leave, right? Um, but we need to really pay attention to actions. I feel like this person's actions backs up their words. But again, you might have those thoughts. This is too good to be true. Or maybe it's them with you, but I feel like this is a very faithful person. Uh, next, you have this misfortune card. Everyone has either had this or the tower card. We're gonna see a lot of tower moments over the next like 10 years. I talk about it all the time. So, you know, I don't know, just don't freak out. Uh, you have this wife card. Someone either wants to make you a wife or you want to make someone a wife. And uh, here you go. Definitely a very solid love reading if you want it. I would say that it's a solid reading for commitments. Like if you, even if you just want to commit to, with that four wands, that could be like a business contract. Um, you know, it could be like you setting up a business contract or something like that. Again, we are during Mercury retrograde, but like, oh no, you know, it's like I've signed contracts under re Mercury retrograde plenty of time. And guess what? Nothing bad has happened. I've moved like three times under Mercury retrograde and signed contracts uh, all three times and nothing crazy has happened. So again, all you have to do is make sure you double check the contract and then have someone else double check the contract. If you do that, you'll be perfectly fine. And, but again, looks really good. I love this reading for you, Taurus. Definitely very positive. So uh, thank you for being here and definitely enjoy uh, your month.